the 17.5% VAT charges on banking services. Um, it looks as if the way you started it, you had, you had a whole lot of problems with people are criticizing you that the banks were trying to help you and then you turn your guns against the banks saying that they acted prematurely and all of that. But most importantly, let's get the basic education. I'm pretending as if I have not heard you say anything about it. What is it? What will it affect? What will it not affect? Yes. Um, I think what happened in the last few days uh, is quite uh, irresponsible on the part of the banks and others who misconstrued the whole information. Things like that can be very serious because it can cause a bank run. The banks are at the forefront. They are doing the banking. The law was so kicking in January. You and hadn't done any work. They were trying to sensitize their, their customers. And you see, you see that was ir no, uh, irresponsible? No, we, we, you see, we, 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 you know, the, the banks have the right to send information out there. The people are, have the right to comment about it. It's a freedom of speech. When were you going to do it? But it comes with responsibility. When were you going to do it? <coughs> well, it has already started. It is for that reason that we did not implement it in, in, in January, but we said we'll give a six-month window before we actually implement it, to give the banks the, the, the opportunity or to, or to give all of us the chance to understand this properly and know exactly what this means. Now, let me break it down. The Act is applicable, that's 17.5, 17 is applicable on what we call a non-core financial services. A non-core financial services is basically what is not the core business of the bank. Doc, Doc, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. What is not the core business of the bank? Banks are set up traditionally to take deposit, to give loans, and, 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 and do what we call a core banking. Mm. If you put your, your salary in the bank, or if you go to the bank to collect a loan, all these things are not affected. Right. Now, for some of the banks and for some media to put it out there, that we are going to charge 17.5% on salaries and on loans is, is quite serious and it's irresponsible. People, I understand, started withdrawing their monies you know, from the bank. This is a country where still a majority of our people are unbanked. But sincerely speaking, have you found out that any of the banks suggested that it will affect people's salaries well, and loans? I, I, have seen, I have seen some of the text messages. I have read some of the information that is out and I'm sure you, you, you have as well. I got to, them, I got to, about three, three, to, three of to them. an extent mm. where people were saying that the banks even suggested to them that they should go and register for VAT. I mean if that is not irresponsible, I don't know what is. I mean coming from See. you know, coming from the banks. And as I said, this is only applicable to what we call, you know, the non core financial services. Now, there are two functions now that if, if you want to categorize what banks do. Let, let, me, let me just read one of those messages to you. Okay. And let's find out if indeed the banks were doing anything wrong. And I got this from, from Barclays. They say, Dear Valued Customer, Barclays is committed to treating its customers fairly by keeping them well informed on all issues relating to our banking relationship. In relation to our earlier notice with, the, with respect to the VAT on financial services okay this is the the one that mm -hmm. after you postponed everything they sent but this is what right. they said they said that uh, dear valued customer with the coming into force of the new VAT Act Act 870 banks are required to charge 17.5 percent VAT on all services rendered for a fee effective May 2014 visit the Barclays branch for further details. If you're going to withdraw your salary from the bank, you know, you don't pay a fee for withdrawing your salary from the bank. Right. What this is, this, and I did not sort of take any particular, yeah. specify they said any VAT particular. on all services rendered for a fee, does it? Rendered for a fee, services yes. rendered for a fee. What I'm saying is that the statement that they put out there is not wrong, but is, is ambiguous. It doesn't tell the full story. Mm. And if you look at it, you will just assume that this applies to all services that the banks render. But that is not the case. As I said, there are core functions that the banks, you know, render services on. What does the law say? 
the law specific. Yeah. Uh, the, the Honorable Aiko Chu has it here. Maybe he should do us the, the honors of reading this particular uh, thing that's bringing us all of this. You see, I've been trying to find out whether there are exemptions, as he keeps on saying. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the minister can always, by legislative instrument, make regulations. So this uh, talk about where the tax applies and where it does not apply, I've been trying to comb the law. Whether indeed they have regulations in which they are telling the banks don't apply it this way. But say, how, how, those, how is the law couch? What is the language? Uh, well, it's straightforward. It's, mm -hmm. But it's got so many things, you mm. know, and I don't know. It's I'm thinking quite general. Get the general mm. There is imposed by this act a tax to be known as a value added tax, which is to be charged on a supply of goods or services made in the country other than exempt goods or services and be import of goods or import of services other than exempt imports. There's no one specific to the banking services? I don't, that's what I'm trying to find out. Okay. Well, know, what, I mean, what, what I'm telling so you where, with, where, with this where in particular... Is Mr. The question I put is, mm -hmm. where is this data in the law? Okay. This question, that the, 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 the issue we, he keeps on bringing about, that is mm. not... It's okay. only on the... Well, let me explain. Let, yes. the let him explain. Where is we we have know. indicated to the bank, mm -hmm. the banks, mm -hmm. that the 17.5% as applied to the financial services will only be on non, the, the non-core business right. of the bank. Right. You see, over the years, banks have moved from their traditional business of, of what I described earlier into doing things like providing you know, accounting services, right. providing <laughs> other uh, uh, yeah. services you know, to their customers. As, as part of the, you know, the competition within the banking sector. Mm -hmm. For instance... You, you speak you about uh, non-core financial services mm -hmm. such yeah. as data processing, yes. and legal accounting, yes. uh, actuarial, notary, notary yes. and consulting, consulting services. services. And I was going to give you an example to make it more practical. Right. No, where is it contained? Can I finish? You know, what, <laughs> you what is, finish. We, we, are, come, we are talking we'll about what is top. causing the, problem, the, the problems at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we, we address it. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it will create problems for our banking you know, sector and, and invariably create problems for the economy. Right. And it is important that we don't, we don't play with it. It's already created some panic. Yes, and that is what we are trying to, we are trying to correct. And as I said, I was giving a practical example <coughs> that... Some banks today do valuation for their, for their customers, okay? If you want to go and get a loan from a bank, I mean, traditionally, we, if, you, if the banks ask for a collateral, you will use your house. Now, to be able to use your house, your house, you need valuers to value the house so that the bank will be able to ascertain how much your house is worth so that in, 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 if you are not able to pay the loan when, we, when you default, mm. the banks will be able to fall, you know, on that security. Or fall, or fall on that security. You could go to a valuer and get that service provided for you by the valuer and you bring the valuation report, report to the bank. When you go and get that service, you pay for it. You pay for it because the, the valuer will charge you a fee and it's upon that fee that the 17.5% will apply. Now, banks are offering this service, you know, as, a, as they call it, a, a comprehensive experience. So they have a unit within the bank that will charge you for this service. Now, currently, the VAT does not apply when the bank provides you the service. Mm. Part of the reason why we are doing this tax reform is to make the tax system fairer in as much as we are widening the net. So basically, what we are saying is that if the banks provide you the service, the fee that they charge you for that service will attract a 17.5%. It is not the loan that you are going to collect from the bank. So it is not... The, 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 the VAT is not applicable to, if I can say, the transaction amount if you are going for a loan. But for the services that they have provided you in terms of uh, valuing your, your, your asset for you. It's the same with payroll. Banks do payroll mm. for, for, for em employers. This was traditionally done by you know, accountants and other data processing services. What we are saying is that if you are providing a payroll service, and putting people, if, if, you, if some of the empl employees bank with your bank and you provide that payroll services, you charge a fee for that service to the employer. That is what the 17% apply. It's not the salary 
that you put in, in an individual's account in your bank mm. that will attract 79%. Okay. And I think it's important that we make that very clear mm. because you and I will not be happy to know that if we put, if the, our salaries are put in a bank, we are charged 17.5% or if we are going to withdraw our money, we get charged 17.5%. All right. Clearly, people will not put their money in the bank. Mm. And it, I, I said it's, it, it is on the bank's own part, I mean, in terms of responsibility, to make sure that such on, uh, you know, unambiguous information, and, and I call it irresponsible, it's not put out there. Because in the end, the banks are going to take a hit if people choose not to, not to put their monies in the bank. And, 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 and I said invariably affect, affect the economy. I see. Um, th there's this other, this how uh, another bank put it, Teco Bank. The new VAT Act 870, 2013 which will be implemented by the Ghana Revenue Authority, requires all financial institutions to charge 17.5% VAT on fees and commissions. Fees and commissions. Customers registered for VAT can claim the VAT charged by financial institutions as input VAT. Customers not registered for VAT should consider doing so. Your branch manager would be pleased to offer assistance on the VAT registration process. Thank you. This is, this is where you say they're confusing. Yes, absolutely. I the mean, if question, you are referring, the to, next if you are referring to customers mm. as companies, right. that is different. The, the but next question, Mr. Minister, customers. the next question is, mm. who is responsible for this confusion? I would say that the banks, obviously, the people who put the information out there are responsible <coughs> for the confusion. In you, the don't, that you don't no, have a law. On, hold on, let me. You don't have a law that on. strictly says what ought to be charged and what ought not to be charged. You see, you let, are let me, now let me, seeking let me tell to you, define. Let me tell you, and the banks are going to be left to a we, discretion. We, we have had discussions with the banks where an indicative list of what is exempted and what is not, core and non-core business. So, for me, I find it very strange. This list did not come with the law. It did not come with the law, but of course, the law, you know, to, to implement the law, you must make it clear. So the confusion you know, started from your, your it, end? It, it, didn't, it didn't start from our end, and I, I would like to, you know, us to have a collective responsibility here, that of course, maybe the education beyond the banks ought to have been intensified. But as, as far as the banks are concerned, the education knowing, was non-existent. Knowing, knowing very well, mm. it is the banks who put this thing out there. Yes. Knowing very well, if you don't understand, and this is, this is something very important. If you don't understand, what do you do? You ask. You don't just go and put out a blanket information out there. In fact, even to an ordinary, ordinary person, if, if you, you just hear that 17.5% of my salary will be, will be taxed, or if I give a loan to somebody, 17.5%, you would expect that people in the banking profession would have come back to government to say that, hang on, what are you talking about? That 17% of, you know, somebody who takes, if, if every 100 CDs of your salary will suffer 17, you know, and, and, and 50, 50 pesos. So what I'm trying to say is that, okay. yes, the so, education sorry, but, should sorry, have gone a, a, bit, a bit of an emergency situation. Yeah. Uh, the information reaching us here is that uh, there's been a very fatal accident at, on the, on the is it Spinkters, uh, near Action Chapel area and that uh, victims are being pulled out on the motorway, on the motorway, and that victims are being pulled out presently by some pedestrians. It's, it's, a, it's a bad situation, and we are told, and so we are uh, asking the relevant agencies, if you can hear us now, to rush to the motorway, the Action uh, Chapel uh, side of it, where we are told that there's a fatal accident and it looks very bad at this moment. Yeah. Yes, the, I mean, there was an ongoing <coughs> consultation the reason why this six, pe uh, six months period was taken was basically to, to make sure that we are all talking from the same page. The law, now, the law, the, the law was supposed to start January 2nd, 2014, correct? That's correct. What had you done before January uh, 2nd, 2014 well, as government? Well, nothing. No, no, hang on, hang yeah. on. <laughs> Say nothing. You know, the law has to be passed first. Mm -hmm. It happened on the 31st. I think 31st, it was signed on 31st of December. You know, December. Mm -hmm. It was meant to start on the 2nd, I believe, you right. know, obviously the first being a holiday, right. to start on the 2nd of January. We came out, the banks are aware of this, that look, we are not going to implement this straight away because this needs some education and some understanding as to exactly what this is applicable and uh, where this is applicable and not applicable. And as I said, 
It is to apply to so the So you never non communicated that it was going to start in May? It was not, not communicated. What I'm trying to say, we, we gave ourselves a six month, so you would assume mm -hmm. that it will start in May. Right. But that date now, was not set in stone. Good. So the banks knew yes. that it was going to start in May. Right. Tentatively. Yes. And you, between that time when you postponed it until when the banks began to issue out these you know, announcement to their customers. You have done virtually nothing. No, that is wrong. That is not correct. That is what I'm telling you. The that public, the, the public the reason, got to know about it the because reason, the banks began to inform them. What, what I was telling you, mm. and, and to be honest with you, you know, the banks have a responsibility to inform their customers. Right. What I'm saying is that the, 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 the engagement with the banks mm. started on the 2nd of January, if you can put it that way. And the idea the reason why we did not implement it in 2nd January, mm. but to do it in May, was to make sure that the banks have a good understanding on what this whole thing is about. Now, we, we, we are almost there in May, and the banks are sending out messages that clearly shows that they have not understood what this whole thing is about. Okay. And what I'm saying is mm. that if they don't understand it, mm. being a professional body as they are, you don't go out and issue set, set ambiguous statements, unclear statements, mm. And, and a statement that clearly could have serious implication, you know, within our banking, you know, banking sector. Okay. And as I said, the economy as a whole. Okay, so, so that the, is where the, I, have, the I have the issue. From, from the standpoint of the minister, they will take no responsibility <coughs> for the confusion. Well, I, I don't agree with I, I don't think I said that. <laughs> I don't think I said that. I said the education okay. beyond, beyond the banks was not, you know, intensified. The education beyond the banks, because mm. we, were, we were talking, you know, with the banks. But I do admit that the, the education beyond the banks to the general public, mm. you know, could have been, could have been handled better. You, right? you see, le let's put it this way. You have an act. The act has been assented to, to by, by the, the president. president. Yeah. And therefore, it is deemed to have come into force thereafter. Now, if you don't want it to commence, then there is something we do, commencement date. Right. And you say that this act can come into force only by a legislative instrument or something passed by, you know, determining the date that it does to, to kick in. We, we don't know, and I have not seen it under this law, that indeed you delayed implementation to say that it, it has not indeed come into force. I, I haven't found it. That's number one. Number two, an act will not contain everything when it comes to administration. And therefore, you have legislative instruments that give teeth to it. Now, if you want to exempt certain things and you think the best way to go about it is to put it in a form of law, then you could have prepared the regulations which would then go along with the act. In that regulation, then you state clearly that these are exempt when it comes to tax VAT, VAT on services. You understand? If these things are not contained anywhere, and we are, you know, a constitutional government, we, we believe in the rule of law, then you cannot blame those who, in their view, because the law is in force, and you have told them tentatively that, look, we, we, we delay it a bit, but we're going to start in May. Mm. Now start, you know, working on the minds of their customers. Now get ready, because this is going to happen. You don't blame them. <laughs> because you could have made it we, a law. You we, could we, have given we, it a force We are, not, we are not blaming them for, mm. for informing their customers. Yes. We are blaming them for sending an, a, a statement that is ambiguous. Well, but if you wanted to exempt... You know, a, 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 a certain people from not paying the taxes or certain services mm. from not being attracted to those taxes. Why didn't you state it in black and white? And then as we speak, you can bring it and tell us that this is what we told them, that these are all exempt. If they are not that, there, that is what I was telling and you, you are that, now that saying that you've been talking, that the banks are away. There yeah. is a list. This indicatively, you know, why is it that contained? That is why I keep on this talking about is it part of the law? It's not. Is it yeah, a legislative you, you, instrument? You, 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 because you, you have you the power about, You are talking to about them, you know, that... An you ally. Know. Why haven't you put it well, in an I, ally? I, 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 because I, I, the law goes with it. It's clearly stated that the minister has the power mm. to make legislative instruments. 
and clearly state whatever you want. But these are restrictive directives. I see. You are uh, there, the there obviously has been some, you know, short force <laughs> in, in terms of uh, the education. Okay. But then I, 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 I still say that I think the, the, the banks and, 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 you know, part of the media, not all. You think that the bank will know, be happy if people are withdrawing monies? You think they will be happy? Well, they put a statement out there. Yeah, okay. but they will And they know what the consequences will be. <laughs> all right. Um, um, let, mm. Once again, may, may we remind uh, the police, uh, if you are listening, uh, watching us, police ambulance services, please, your, your services are needed uh, the, on the motorway. That's the term to a cry end of the motorway because there's a very serious accident there and serious injuries, we are told, are being recorded. Please uh, get out to that place and assist. Uh, Kuku has the law. I want to listen to you before I come to Dr. Yawea Zakaria. Know. Somebody just called my attention to it, but I think my legal understanding is very weak. Mm. Mm. You see, it's, uh, the uh, first schedule, mm. the fun in terms of exemptions. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so if Mr. Yukutu can do us a favor, he says a supply. Let's, let's check that one. Schedule one. I've been trying to understand mm. it, but it appears I'm limited there. Right. Which one? And, and, and a lot of people to ask questions 19. about how, whether or not this will not be passed Section on 19. to the customers, yeah. you know, and what that effect will be on the economy. I'll return to you and mm -hmm. then you, you will deal with that effectively. A um, supply subject to paragraph B of financial you have the services, old law. Yeah, excluding ah, okay. financial services rendered for a fee, commission, or a similar charge, or and B of life insurance and reinsurance, whether or not rendered for a fee, commission, or a similar charge. You call it an exemption, and you are saying that subject to paragraph B of financial services, excluding financial services rendered for a fee, commission, or a similar charge. What do you understand by financial services rendered for a fee? Are the banks not rendering financial services for a fee? Do you find that the banks will be, it will be at the discretion of the banks to determine <laughs> Which what one? Is, what is core and what is non-core? That is what I'm saying. And that could bring that some confusion. Rather Do you clarify anticipate that. That, that, it, that is why <laughs> I, I the said that the list, it. the list mm. should cure that. Right. Mm. The list should clearly, mm -hmm. or it clearly tells what is the non-core business okay. of the bank and but what but is the core business of the it's, bank. It's your, it's, yeah, it's right. your time. Uh, by right. the did the GRE mm. indicate to the banks that they could operationalize this thing in January? Was there no such a direction that came from the GRE to the banks? Not and to then it was not frozen? To no, not to operate. Yes, not to operate, yes. No, no, to operate, to begin to implement. To begin to implement. And then, because yes. of the lack of clarity, it was suspended. This is a joy news. That is exactly what I'm saying. Because generally, it, it, it should have started on the 2nd of January. Yes. Okay. And the directive was given that proceed. That, no, not to proceed. Well, this is joy, my joy online. Mm. Uh, 13th February 2014 right. and said the financial institutions were expected to have started charging VAT on fee-based services from January 2nd according to the Ghana Revenue Authority. Mm -hmm. However, lack of clarity on the areas to levy the tax forced all interested parties to freeze the implementation. Mm -hmm. Now at that point in time, you obviously didn't have a list, mm -hmm. the indicative list, but it appears that there was a certain readiness to go ahead and implement. Yes, and I, 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 I think I, I, the I whole think thing too might have begun in Parliament. Uh, in Parliament, you see the noise that came up about this tax mm -hmm. thing. It was mm -hmm. initially smuggled in, mm -hmm. if you recall, the increment. <laughs> I, I don't know about smuggling. Yeah, smuggling there was a smuggling, in, it, smuggling it happened in. on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yes, and I you see, that, that could that be could a smuggler. Be, because parliamentary <laughs> deliberation yeah. uh, has an effect of producing transparency, <laughs> and it helps the counter-arguments, the arguments yes. and things. Yes, so course. by the time you finish, Many of these things may have been clarified I even in the public mm -hmm. domain. I think that was part of the problem. Somehow, I'm beginning to think that the indicative list, if indeed mm -hmm. we see the full stretch of yeah. it, and if all the stakeholders concede that, look, this is something we should proceed to work with, and it, 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 could, be made, it, it could be made available. It would yeah, be made it could, available. It could cure yes. the machine. It, it would be made available. But perhaps the unbridled appetite for taxation is also part of the problem. Unbridled? <laughs> 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 yeah, there appears to be such an insatiable appetite for taxation. Too many taxes. Okay. I, I, think, I think it's, it's, more, it's more of doing tax reforms. To make sure that we broaden the net and also make sure that the, the tax is, is in you know, the process. There are too many taxes. I think like this, tourism is to make day, this, tourism this is to Everywhere make the tax. Everywhere you pass, there's an attempt to tax. You, know, you say the that there is a problem. 
you had a president who was a tax expert, and now you have a minister who is also a tax expert. So it appears the Minister of Finance I'm talking no, about. I didn't know the president. Is, no, oh, yes, oh, yes, the president. Oh, oh, uh, you know oh, oh, you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they appear to be interested in, in taxes. That is part of it. No, no, no. I, I, I don't think you that know, is correct. That is a point think, I wanted no, I to make. That is you, you are see, going more our, into taxes our, our tax laws than are, are other actually ideas. Quite old. And I think that is important that we, we actually reform that. that reform, the, the yes, but you are stretching it. Okay. Yes, but, but all sorts of elements see, are coming like in. Like I gave the value, the, the value example. If a valuer is paying 17.5% on, on services that they are rendered, and the same service is being rendered within the bank, then it is fairer that the banks also pay you know, the, same, the same amount of money so that the, you, the customer, will then choose where you want to go okay. so that you are not forced to you know, be with... Following following all that has gone on Means so far, what, what, what do you think money. has been the missing link? Oh, yeah, yeah. That has led to all the panic and now, <laughs> now it's been postponed again. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you so much. As the uh, minister has explained and as uh, panelists have, have discussed um, uh, broadly, taxes are things that anybody who is concerned about national development cannot you know, boldly come to speak against. So mm -hmm. as a principal, everybody who likes to see development in a country would speak and work towards ensuring that uh, taxes are properly you know, um, imposed and then also properly collected for the benefit of the country. And their use. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, That's you know, the problem is. And also effectively yeah. used. Now, on this particular issue of Act 870, um, there are two main issues that, that arise and a, num a number of discussions have um, talked about it. The law and the, the letter of the law and the intention of the law. Now, the sponsors of that act was the Minister of Finance, and the Parliament of Ghana approved it as Act 870. So they, they are present to give us the real spirit, the real meaning, what they intended for taking this particular um, um, bill to Parliament and got the approval to implement. So you would realize that in implementing it, certain agencies are supposed to act on behalf of government for that matter, Ghana Revenue Authority, to collect these taxes. So these, these entities are agents of GRA. They need to be given the real understanding in terms of the intentions that informed the basis of this law. And you would realize from the minister's discussion that a technical team had been set up, and that technical team comprised of um, Minister of Finance officials and GRA officials, as well as um, the implementing agencies, which are the banks, and they are going through to look at the word and the meaning, the spread, I mean, the intention that informs this particular law. You realize that in that process, a list is supposed to have been developed, which he calls the indicative list. Now, that indicative list is to end all forms of ambiguity that the letter of the act seems to create. So, the, what is missing here, actually, is for this indicative list to be given out to all it, it will be. I mean, and when that is done, I have a firm belief that all these, you know, misunderstandings would, be, would be addressed. Right. So the other issue is, you know, the, 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 the decision to allow the banks or the banks themselves taking the initiative to lead the communication process. You know, this is, this is a function of a government body. You are being contracted as an agent. or the, you banks, are the, banks, the banks have compliance yeah. offices. They have, they have lawyers, yeah, yeah. So can and I they, have, they have a law that is in front of them. No, I'm and saying they know, that. They yeah. know the commencement dates no, of no, the no, law. No, no, I'm saying that, no. <laughs> now, no. When, when the government that's the, uh, the government has not given any education, and they know that by the start of the uh, operation of the mm. law, they will be held accountable yeah. if they don't charge. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they if you, if, 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 if you, if no, if, 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 no, no, can I, can I, can I, no, if you, no, can I finish? If you, if you, if you look at the law, educated by the government. Yeah, honorable. You see, if you look at the law, and all of us have agreed, if they were just to follow the law as it is, it was, you know, a given presidential accent in December. So ordinarily, if it was just the law that, you know, the basis for the implementation, but they would they have started... Asked, they were they have, to start. No, the statement you read didn't show that. The no, statement he just told you that they told them that it was going to kick in in May. In six, in months. May. In in six May. months. In May. No, but he said May. Which was May. Mm. No, six months is actually June. No, he said yeah, but he agreed that it was May. 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 Yeah, so <laughs> okay, so there's no debate so, about so, that. So, yeah, I agree, no. But, but the point I'm making is that mm. it's not just the, 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 the act as it is that they should just go ahead to implement. There's supposed to be 
an implementation process, mm. which all of us have agreed here. Now, the other issue mm. is the, the incidence of, of that tax. Even though we all agree that VAT is a regressive tax and um, the actual incidence is to the final consumer. Now, from the explanation that he has provided and, you know, looking at it critically, you realize that services have been, this kind of services have been provided by other entities and they are having a VAT inclusive charge for the fee that has been churned out. So the, the real thing that needs to, to, be, to be sorted out is who in this particular situation bears the incidence? You understand? So for, so for instance, the charges that, are, that they are currently collecting, mm. was it VAT inclusive? Were they supposed to even be calculating a percentage of that amount they are collecting and giving it to government? Or they are now supposed to, to right. add something to the, uh, to the, to, to the cost buildup? Right. Of, of, of the services that they provide. These are mm. things that they need to sort out in their discussions mm. with, with, with the bankers. My, my, my point, Mr. People. Minister, was that the banks are supposed to obey the law and not the, the ministry. Mm. So if they have the law before them and they know that there's a setting date and it's not coming up, then they have a, an obligation to also uh, educate their people. There is no issue with the banks the going out to, right. to educate yeah. their yeah. Yeah. customers. Yeah. I think yeah. it's their responsibility to do yeah. that. What I'm saying is that the information that they, they, they churn out there happened not to be the accurate information. Okay. And we are, we, are, we are talking about this today because obviously things have not gone down well. Right. And I do agree that, you know, on our part, we, we should take part of the, part of the blame that mm. the education, mm. you know, beyond the banks, did, you know, hasn't gone down very well. It had but, not started at all. But, had but it? the <laughs> banks, yeah. the banks also have the responsibility not to go out there if they haven't understood to go out and put up some information because the thing is about to start. I see. see if you, if okay. You, you so they would have gone out uh, on the understanding that they had. Yes. Uh, by that time, and, have and you, that had you pr uh, provided them the list? Yes. I mean, I the, list, the list I'm, I'm talking to you about okay. is, is, is somewhere in February. Okay. Yeah, okay. You see, all, all so, so now you say moving forward, you have, you have uh, postponed again. Moving forward, mm -hmm. we are engaging the banks. Right. Obviously, intensify the education to the general public. Mm -hmm. To, and then this list will come out so that it will clearly state what is a non-core you know, business and what is a core business. Right. What is exempt from this tax and what is going to be vatable. Right. And so and that it, you know, it will clear any ambiguity mm. and, and, and not cause the problems that we are facing at the moment. Uh, and yeah. the, new, uh, the new date is, is it uh, June or when? Um, I'm, I'm not actually quite sure, but I think, I think a June date, um, you know. Right. Was, okay. Was, was Thank you. Thank idea. you very much. So yeah. what, what you have put out there is that uh, the, the VAT that we are talking about mm. only affects fees that are charged on non-core financial services, yes, yes. such as data processing, legal, accounting, actuarial, notary, and consulting services. Mm -hmm. And then you also indicated that this is not a new law no. that has been in place since 1998. And I'm just wondering that you are saying to us that uh, banks were already charging or people were already already paying yeah. uh, VAT on data processing and the things you are, mm. you are, you are, you are mm. specified? Because the banks previously, they were before, doing, this, there was the, no need for it. before mm. this came in, the banks were not, were not uh, VAT registered. I see. Now they are, they, are, they are to be VAT registered. Right. So that they too can offset of, uh, of some of, you know, mm -hmm. say they print, uh, let's say, what is it called, uh, checkbooks. Right. And then the, the, the printer or the publisher will charge them VAT. Mm. That becomes part of their cost. Briefly, now, what do you mean by this? When you say uh, Act 870 requires the banks to register for VAT and they can offset the VAT against the mm. VAT they charge. What that, do you that mean by is, that? Uh, that's, uh, we'll say too much English. But uh, <laughs> basically, <laughs> that is what I was trying to explain. Mm. That previously, the banks were not VAT registered. If you are VAT registered, you know, you, you have, we have something called input and Move output. Move on from the output. registration, yeah. offsetting it. No, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Mm. It, it, it comes to that. Mm. Because you can only offset um, VAT when you are VAT registered. Right. Because if you buy something and then you are charged VAT, and then you use that to produce something and you're also selling it, you also charge VAT, <coughs> so that there can be some kind of offsetting going on mm. with your input and output VAT. Mm -hmm. And then what the difference is, is what you pay to government. Yeah, it's because okay. it's on the tax same basis. basically, uh, you know, you collect and pass it on to, to government. And, uh, as yeah, no, it's, it's on the same basis that the banks themselves are requesting their corporate customers, even though they sent it out yes. to all, yes. that they should go and, and that, then register. That is where I, I said yeah. the, the, the statement was not clear. 
you know, the customers they were mm. referring to to go and register for VAT are businesses, right, yeah. not individuals. Corporate, yeah, corporate, okay. corporate customers. All right, again, okay. thank okay. you, thank you very.